Good day, everybody. We're trying to determine the remainder when a 34-digit number, which is a natural number, and that's that should be pretty clear. I'll show you why if that doesn't make any sense. But we're trying to find the remainder when this natural number that appears to be a fraction is divided by 13. Now, if, just taking a look at this denominator, it's 13 squared, right? And if you look at the definition of factorial, and I left out the one because it's unnecessary and saves a little bit of space, we have two multiples of 13, the 13 that's right here, and then, of course, the 2 times 13 right there. Those are the only two multiples of 13 in the expansion of 32 factorial, right? So that's why they cancel out, and this thing is a natural number. And we can ask questions like, what do you get when you divide by 13? So this line right here is what I just said. You see how the 13 went away here, and then the 2 is left right here, okay? Now... The next part of this that, that's important, I guess, is um, this part right here is congruent. I mean, th this part right here can be reduced. In other words, you have 2 times 3 times 4 times 12 times 14. Oh, yeah, that's what I need to tell you about. Sorry. Um, we, have, um, we have a result called Wilson's Theorem that's important here for, for this particular problem. Um, it states that p minus 1 factorial is congruent to negative 1 mod p. Modulo p where p is a prime. This holds for any prime. It actually gives necessary and sufficient conditions for a number to be prime, although in the computations get super large. Now, the special case we're dealing with, of course, is p is equal to 13. And so what you would get right here out of this is 12 factorial is congruent to negative 1. Uh, mod 13 okay and that's what's happening right down here folks um, see this piece right here would be congruent to negative 1 okay and then the piece that follows also uh, I, I wrote let's see I didn't get enough detail in here yeah um, 2 times 3 times 4 all the way out yeah you see how we had two copies of it going on right here we had two copies of it going on right here let me, let me square this so it'll make more sense for you. Okay, if you square this and square this, you get the one that you were getting right here. Okay? But you see, 2 times 3 times 4 times 12 really happened twice if you look at 14 times 15. Okay, 14 times, you see, this would be congruent to 2, and this would be congruent to 12 all the way out. So you see, we use this thing twice. That's why we have this exponent of 2. Hope that makes sense. Okay, so now that leads to an immense simplification here because you just have minus one squared here. You see, um, did I, I didn't even write that in, did I? Okay, squared follows from the definition of Wilson's theorem. So we have minus one squared and we get rid of a lot of terms. It's pretty nice. Now notice 27 is congruent to one, 28 is congruent to two. So I wrote that down right here for you. Okay. So we reach this stage in the problem where all we have to do is reduce this relatively simple looking expression modulo 13. Now, let's see, let me let me try to group this out. We have a 2 here and a 2 here. So we can go ahead, I'll just write it down uh, that this part, it's congruent but it's also equal to 4. And I'm just going to take care of this up front 2 times this 2 times this 2 is 4 and then we have uh, times uh, I'm going to try to do it in groups right now, folks. I'll just do the, the grouping for you. 2 times 2 is 4, so we're le and also we're left with a 3 times 4, which would be 12, right? Let's see if I'm keeping track of stuff here. So we've taken care of 2 times 2, which is 4, and 3 times 4, which is 12. And all that's left would be 5 times 6, right? This, this kind of helps because these are re already... Uh, residues, you know, so we need to make them large enough to where you can take a remainder. Okay, now this is equality, but it is congruent to this because it's just a re it's just an algebraic uh, simplification. Now, what about this right here? Uh, let's see, 48, so this would be congruent to, okay, 48, 3 times 13 is 39, so you'd have 9 left over, right? That's 4 times 12 reduced mod uh, 13, I think, 48. Uh, 
3 times 13 is 39, and so that leaves a remainder of 9, okay? So what about 5 times 6? That's 30. So that would leave a remainder of 4. That's why it's called remainder arithmetic. Now, folks, but this is equal to 36. Now, if you divide 13 into 36, you get 26 plus 10, right? So this is actually congruent to 10. Which should be our answer if I haven't made any mistakes. There's always a chance you'll make mistakes. I decided I like doing it this way, show most of the work, and then just try to finish it off because uh, there's no way I, it's too slow to write with this mouse, and also there's too many ways to make mistakes. I'm pretty sure this is right, though. 10 is correct, I believe. And we use modular arithmetic to show that, that, that 10 is our remainder. Okay, so that is the final answer. Thanks for viewing.